fills the cup entirely. It fills the cup, it feels the cup, it becomes the cup. Condensation is leaking outside the cup, even though there are no openings. Water finds a moment. And so the difference between these two um, states of being literally is that the ice itself is trapped. And although memory is important, it's necessary, you can't function without memory. You have no life, in fact, without memory, serenely. The reason why it is called the ice or the hell of ice is because it affects your relationship with others. Meaning, if I see Beth and she's smiling at me, and I see that she's approaching me, she's walking towards me with that beautiful smile that she has. If I'm frozen in my memory of Beth, then my memory influences my relationship with her in this moment. Meaning, I remember Beth, she stepped on my feelings last week. She was rude to me a couple of months ago. She, uh, I don't know, I can't make up a story, but about that. And so these images become a part of that ice cube. And so my relationship to her is icy, literally. It is devoid of warmth. And unfortunately, this, my sweet friends, is what memory does. And that is why our sages call it the icy realm. Now, if memory shuts you off from discovery, if it leads you through a life where you're just regurgitating icy memories and not discovering what is before you, then what is your objective? Your objective is to melt. As a matter of fact, my teacher, Rebbe Khal Shapir, used to say, when you look for another teacher, don't look for a teacher who is going to fill up your ice cube. I mean, to give, to give you only information. Information and data, knowledge, this further squares you. You know, you become a box to fill. <coughs> my Rebbe used to say that when you look for a teacher, Look for a teacher who's going to help melt the ice. To help you melt it. If you are with someone, a friend, a lover, a teacher, who melts you, that's a person that you stay with. That's a person you stay with.